There we go. Okay. Hey guys. Um, thanks for hopping on our team call tonight, team training and inspiration call. Um, I have some very fun news that I have seen a sneak peek of what's coming for Black Friday. Um, I might not know about all of it, but I know about some of it. So that's good. Um, and if I have learned anything in the last eight years, it's that starting early on your Black Friday success plan, um, that is the way to go. Because I think what we do sometimes is we get caught up in the urgency of the sale once the sale happens. And that day feels very stressful or the days right before it feels super stressful when we maybe have done some prep, but like in past years, we've had like a VIP group or something or like a steals and steals and deals group. Um, and I don't think we're going to go that route this year, um, just for what the sales are and stuff and how we want to communicate them. Um, which we've done that for a couple of years. We're kind of evaluating that if you feel super strongly that you absolutely love that idea and you want to run with it, then I can help you do that. But, um, <laughs> we're like, we're not going to do that this year. And so sometimes there have been some preemptive activity to get people into that. Um, but even right now, it's not even November yet. I am already thinking how to make our Black Friday a success and also one that doesn't feel so stressful, so desperate, so FOMO driven um, and take time away from our family over a holiday weekend. You know, like that's really the point. I don't want any of us to feel like we're having to step away from the people and things that we love um, because we have fear of like missing out of the sale or we're just desperate to, um, you know, have some sales and orders come in and all that. So um, we're going to try to avoid all that by really setting ourselves up for success and doing the things that matter earlier on so that we even possibly could have some sales in our back pocket before Black Friday even happens. Right. So that when we roll into it, we kind of know what we're dealing with and we're not sitting there on Friday morning trying to message 75 people. Right. So that's what we want to avoid. Um, nobody wants to do that on their Friday morning after Thanksgiving. Right. So, but we have to remember that we, along with every single other social seller out there, <laughs> is going to have a Black Friday special. Right. They're going to be blasting it all over the internet. You're going to see all the company graphics. You're going to see stuff everywhere. It's going to be really loud. It's going to be really noisy. And everyone along with us is also going to be making their VIP list of people to connect with about Black Friday sales, right? Um, we're not the only ones that are going to be doing that type of thing. We're not the only ones who are going to be trying to communicate sales and specials and urgent offers, time sensitive offers, limited time offers, free gifts with purchase. You know, we're not the only ones doing that. Everybody is doing that in person and online. So we sort of need to remember that through Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and Cyber Week, um, the social selling space online is going to be very, very loud. And what we do not want to do is sit back and wait for Black Friday deals to come, wait for them to happen, and just blast them everywhere when they're already here, praying for orders to come in, right? What we want to do early is to really go into overdrive with growing our networks, building connections, delivering a ton of value and reaching out to a lot of people so that we have a curated list of interested parties who are excited right now before we head into Black Friday and before we head into the holiday sales. Because I know I've gotten caught up in the mess before where the once a Black Friday deal drops, then I'm like massively doing reach outs and they're like first time contacts, you know, and I'm doing it Thanksgiving weekend when really I should have been doing these first time reach outs a month beforehand, you know, and already having those um, conversations teed up. Who is interested? What products do they want? Um, what offers are they going to be able to take advantage of, which hopefully we're able to communicate those um, to like our teams well enough beforehand. So that we'll be aware of like, Hey, let's get on the phone Friday at noon and I'm going to place your order with you, you know, as soon as it goes live and that's it. And like, that's your commitment, not sitting for three hours trying to send first time messages to people. Right. So we want to be doing all that stuff beforehand. But the thing is we have got to be able to stand out among the sea of noise out there that is going to be shouting at our friends and family from every corner of the internet about sales and promotions over the next couple of months. And we're going to do that by showing more of our face, more of our stories, more of the real stories of people on our team and people on Team Rise and, you know, people in Plexus. 
we've all, you know, we all hear the like facts tell, stories sell, that sort of thing. Um, but it's true. People aren't really going to buy what we're selling. They're going to buy who we are as the guide, who we are as the person making the offer, right? They're going to, they need to know that they can trust us, that we're not just DMing them on the evening of Thanksgiving saying, Hey, hi Erica, hi Erica. I don't know if you see my Plexus post, but tomorrow we're going to have some sales. And can I add you to my VIP list? <laughs> right. And Erica is going to get 17 other messages from other social sellers. Right. But if we're developing those relationships now and making those connections now and understanding what sort of transformation, transformation they're looking for now, getting clear on their product regimen, building that trust, we can head into the holidays with, um, more of a, relaxed but productive plan of attack that doesn't feel so urgent. Um, so I think it's a really good time to revisit who our ideal customer is, right? I know it's like we do it every so often, you know, maybe every six, once every three to six months, but again, go through who is the person who I am looking to connect with. What is their demographic? What are their interests? What are the problems that they're struggling with? What kind of symptoms are they trying to find relief from? What sort of margin in their finances do they need? And be hyper specific on our communication, our social media posting, and growing our network with this type of person. Okay. And getting really, really, really specific on that and almost going like overboard with the engagement with people. Because, like I was saying before, the internet is going to be flooded with social media posts about sale, 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 sale. sale. And so the stronger the engagement, the more likelihood that they are going to not only trust you and know you, but actually see your content, right? So uh, I know that we do our Plexus day and we have like five engagements every day before we make our Plexus posts. I am personally going to be really, really ramping up the growth, network growth and network engagement categories, big time of my Plexus day activities. Um, I, you know, maybe like, well, three and four X that, and just be really hitting engagement really hard and very specifically growing my network with, um, people that are directly going to relate to me and my content and what I have to offer. Right. Um, and on top of that, going overboard and doubling down on the adding value posts, right? So the things that are going to save people a Google, save them time, maybe save them a conversation, Maybe it's money saving tips, right? Maybe you're actually giving them advice on how to save money on things or tricks or advice or th things you found, um, things you're learning, right? Really doubling down on offering something to their lives. And if we're not educating or offering value, we're at least entertaining them in some way, right? So those are going to be our really, really big categories right now because when people feel like they're receiving true value from us, they have so much more trust um, and admiration for who we are and respect for what we're selling um, and confidence in doing business with us, right? Because we've got to think of how can I stand out from the crowd and be super thoughtful in my content? Um, it's going to be less and less about, hey, look what I did this weekend and more of I know this thing or learned this thing or had this experience or found this thing that is directly going to relate you, Susie Q in my audience to, you know, to you in my audience, right. That's directly going to benefit you in this way. Or this is why I'm sharing this information because I feel like it could be a benefit to you for these reasons, right. Or this is the um, pain point it can relieve, or this is the time or money it will save you. Um, so really, really uh, going all in on value posts are going to be huge. Um, and as it comes to Plexus posting, um, again, we really want to focus on transformational content, right? It's the before and afters. It's the testimonies. It's the stories. It may be a video demonstration of something super short of like, look how simple this is. And these are the benefits that you can receive. Um, especially using like average people language, right? Not company jargon, I think is going to be super important too. Um, there's going to be a lot of products thrown in people's faces. There's going to be a lot of stats and statistics and numbers and discounts and, and product names and all of that. And if we can be the group that is truly showing a real person's real life transformation 
that is going to be so much more relatable and hit home so much more than saying my probiotic is on sale, right? My probiotic is 20% off, you know? So really circle back on how folks are going to feel after they've begun using Plexus and are finding that freedom from their health struggles or financial stress. How is that going to feel? What kind of weight is going to be lifted? What newfound confidence are they going to experience? How do they feel when they get out of bed in the morning? How are they going to feel when they see photos of themselves over the holidays? Are they going to be excited to see family because they actually feel joyful and no longer depressed, right? Um, Are they excited to eat all the holiday foods because they know that they're not going to have stomach problems and be trying to find the bathroom or be, you know, in bed with stomach cramps all night, right? So really, really, really circling back to that type of content and reminding ourselves that that is the stuff that is most relatable. So something that... um, I'm going to be doing, and I kind of urge everybody to just do it on your own, but create a list of the problems that people in our, you know, who our ideal customer struggles with that Plexus can help with, right? What are the problems that our ICA is experiencing? And maybe some verbiage of leading them to imagine how it would feel for them to no longer struggle with that thing and how that plays out in their life. And I feel like our team's been getting really good at that. I think with all this practice writing content, we're really headed in the right direction with all of this, but I think even I can forget that sometimes, Um, especially when I'm writing content on the fly and we all know so much about the products and we can, you know, get into our comfort zone about that. Um, But remembering that people need to see themselves in our, in our content, you know, then you see how they can benefit, um, from an emotional perspective. And so helping them understand that we can guide them through that transformation and explain to them, you know, the benefits of balance, balancing your body in this way is you're going to feel more joyful. You're going to feel more confident. You're going to be excited to go to that holiday party. You're going to jump out of bed every morning instead of being sluggish. You're going to be so excited to take your kids on that field trip you know, or whatever the thing is, um, really give concrete examples of that in our content and honing in on what the results are that our ICA wants. So when you think about your ideal customer, what are the problems that they're dealing with right now? What are the results that they would want? And then how can we tell stories around that, right? And create mental pictures around that. Um, How can we find stories of real people who have struggled with those same things and receive the same results that they're looking for, right? And um, one thing that I gathered when I'm kind of listening to different um, Black Friday advice and some professional social sellers and trainers and stuff, and and one, one common strain throughout was it's a really good idea to focus a clear message around our flagship products and combos. So not the one-off one product here and there, but really honing in on like the gut health system or an immune boosting system or the weight loss system, you know, whatever, whatever speaks to your group of people. Um, Maybe it's family immunity products or something, right? But flagship products and combos that you can hit over and over and over and over and over without worrying about being repetitive because people need to hear the same message like a dozen times before they start to come around to it. Right. And see how it can benefit them. Um, there's a reason why you see the same like five commercials on TV and live television. Right. Um, every time you watch like primetime television, it's like only six different companies advertising. Right. Um, because they know that it takes so much repeated exposure for people to warm up to the idea of, okay, now I'm familiar with this because I've heard it six times. Now that I'm familiar, I'm actually going to start listening. So I'm going to listen another five or six times. And after that five or six times, maybe I start to see how I can benefit, right? And then it still takes another handful of times for them to actually see it as a valuable investment or venture or something that they would actually want, right? So it really takes a lot of exposure. So maybe hone in on, again, what problem our ICA is facing or problems, right? Maybe it's only like three to five things or three things. Um, How Plexus can guide them to the exact results that they're looking for. Finding stories and testimonies or maybe rewriting your own a few different ways 
that speak directly to that and honing in on like one or two flagship product systems that we can just hit again and again and again and again to breed that familiarity, the trust, the confidence, the consistency of message, right? That's huge. Hearing, seeing that same thread through all of your content that like, you know, Kelly is the gut health lady. And I know everything she shares is about how I can improve my gut health and have better digestion and whatever, right? Um, and so kind of honing in on who that is and what that is um, for you in, in our content, right? And really doubling down on that and being okay that we don't need to share about every little thing. We don't need to share about hydrate and then lean and then kids vitamins and then active and then metaburn and then, you know, whatever, especially during this season when it's so noisy, so, so, so noisy. Um, and I think that a lot of us have probably seen this play out when we have maybe a big group challenge, like a big 14 day challenge that we've done in the past. And we hit hard, like a specific combo for maybe a one or two week span of time. And we've seen the fruits of that, right? When we're inviting about something specific, when we're posting about something specific over and over and over and over again, we get the people joining for the specific thing. And so the point is here for us each to grow our customer base and help the people that are in our wheelhouse to help that we directly relate to um, inside of our you know, ideal customer and our niche and all of that in an area that we have experience and expertise. So, I mean, you could treat Black Friday or the holidays like your own challenge group, right? You could just pretend that like, hey, this is the one or two, these are the one or two things that I'm gonna be promoting hard um, because you want your message to be relatable, concise, consistent, um, and very, very clear and very, very, um, trustworthy, right? Um, because if we're all over the place, it can get super confusing. I think if people are seeing a new product every single day, um, or a different type of testimony or something, it can get kind of, kind of wild, right? So you want, you want your people to know that they can come to, to you for something specific, um, and getting really, really consistent. I know we all, I think do a really good job of this right now, especially right now, getting really consistent with both feed posts and stories on Facebook and Instagram, just showing up in the areas where the people are essentially. Um, because a lot of people out there are wildly inconsistent. Um, I know that we each have had our seasons of inconsistency. Um, but if there ever were a time to be uber consistent on your feed and in your stories, it's right now. And if it's too hard to think of essentially four different places, right? You've got Instagram feed and stories, Facebook feed and stories, then just sync them, you know, just sync them. So everything that posts to Instagram is going straight to Facebook. Everything that you post in your stories on Instagram is pushing straight to Facebook. If you feel like that offers some simplicity for you, absolutely do that because they truly are hitting different groups of people. There might be some crossover. There probably is a little bit of crossover, but there are some different eyeballs in those areas. So if needed, sync them. So you are showing up in all the places um, because you're going to get, have a larger reach that way. And Speaking of reach, tackling reach outs is going to be huge. Um, again, I'm like multiplying my engagement so that I have the ability to do more reach outs way well before Black Friday. Um, even for the last like couple of weeks, I'm like, I'm just going to do like an obscene amount of engagement, but almost feels like too much, like just for like a solid 20 minutes, all I'm doing is like engaging, 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 engaging. Um, and doing that on a consistent, pretty daily basis, you know, Monday through Friday, right? So that I have a large pool of people to reach out to. And it doesn't feel like I haven't been talking to anybody online. Um, and so doing more than just three reach outs a day, you know, really doing like five, 10, what, 15, whatever feels good to you that you have that pool of people. Of course, I'm not into the cold message thing because I just don't think it breeds the results that we're looking for. Um, the likelihood of someone responding to that is so slim when they haven't had any outside interaction with us. Um, so that's, that's going to be really taxing and be very labor intensive for very little turnout if you're doing like straight cold messages. And to get away from that, you got to show up, right? You got to be super consistent and engaged heavily. That's how you get past that. And if, it, it, if it's somebody you can engage with in person, great. Um, and I do feel like in-person connections are so much stronger than online connections. It's like you leap 
10 steps forward in a relationship by having an in-person connection. So um, any ways to get involved and get FaceTime with people, especially in community events and holiday activities and all the things going on. Um, I mean, show up as best you can. This is the season for digging in, leaning in, sprinting, right? Like this, this is the time for it. You know, and there are times when you don't do that. You know, midsummer when you're on summer vacation with your family, like maybe not sprinting season for you, but now the next couple of months, it's time to dig in because the last couple of months of the year are going to completely set up our 2024. And what we want to be looking for are adding new customers to our organization that in, in hopes that we can turn around and help them share with their networks. Right. And so the more people you can enter into your organization, the more likelihood you're going to have those new shares come the beginning of 2024. Right. So in all of our, <laughs> hi Penny, in all of our, you know, reach outs and things, um, like I'm looking at the Plexus Day format and I'm thinking, okay, adding friends and followers, engaging with friends and followers, reaching out, like that first category of network growth activities, I'm like tripling that. And just like, now is the time to be doing those things. Um, but in all of that, I would think I was talking to some, Erica was there, I feel like, um, maybe quirky too. But getting a secondary method of contact for them is going to be great because social media will be so busy and noisy and flooded with information. If someone is interested, of course, we're providing them with preliminary information, but then legitimately asking them for their email or phone number and starting that contact list outside of social media. Because then when sales are released, you can push that information on multiple channels. You can push it into their DMs, right? but you can push it into their email or push it into their, you know, phone, their text message or whatever. Right. Um, and make sure that you I mean, ask them in like a kind way, but honestly, it's like, we will be having some black Friday and holiday Plexus discounts and special offers. Would you be open to be open to providing me with your email and phone number or phone number, right? Email or phone number so that I can message you the information before things sell out, right? Or something like that, that promotes some urgency. Um, and you can say whichever works best for you. And it doesn't, so it doesn't have to be some like heavy opt-in situation. Just like, hey, we're going to be having this stuff. Would you mind providing me with your email or phone number, whichever works best for you so that I can communicate um, the sales and specials for you, you know, before you miss out or something or make sure you receive information about those. And so I'm going to start, I haven't, I should have started this already, but as I do my reach outs and people are wanting more information, even people who I'm inviting to our event on Thursday, I'm starting to get their, ask them, you know, for their secondary method of contact for them so that I have that, whether you're growing an email list or growing a phone number list or whatever, um, it's going to be very, very hyper important to have somewhere else to contact them when social media is very busy and very loud. So um, I would gather that and start using that in your method of operation um, and go back. I don't, each of, each of you probably have a list or a planner or a notebook or sticky notes or something of people that you've been talking to all year long many of which have probably tried samples, attended events, asked questions, have info and have not purchased for whatever reason yet. Um, going back through all of those people, all of those potentials, and even calling out that maybe it's been a while since you've connected. You know, you can ask them what's gone on in their life in the last four or six months, whenever, you know, whenever you talk to them last, um, but let them know, I wanted to be sure to connect with you today Maybe a few months ago, we were chatting about how Plexus could help your digestive issues. I know we haven't gotten started just yet, but we will be having some Black Friday and holiday sales coming soon. If you'd like to be notified of the upcoming discounts and special offers, would you be open to providing me with your email or phone number so that I can message that information to you before things sell out, whichever works best for you. And so getting that message out there and being okay if they're like, no, I'm not interested because this is, this is the beforehand stuff that you don't want to be doing on the morning of black Friday. You know, like this is what you want to tee up now so that they're like, yeah, tell me when that stuff releases. And I'm sure we'll have that stuff 48 hours beforehand. Right. So that we could 
contact each person that has said like, yes, here's my information. You can kind of tee it up on Tuesday, Wednesday and let them know, Hey, this is coming on black Friday or whenever it goes live. Um, you know, would you like to chat more or can we chat more about how you can take advantage of this or, you know, whatever kind of script feels good for you. But, um, having those conversations before the holiday so that you've gone through all your potentials, you know, who's interested and who's not. Then when we get our hands on what the deals are, we can go through the interested parties and specifically ask them, can we chat more? Or, you know, what are your thoughts on getting that triplex combo or whatever, you know, um, on Friday, or can I call you Friday at noon to get you, you know, help you order and having those conversations so that, you know, you have all these orders teed up. So the goal here is to really make sure that we're doing the front end work to have a more concise list. That's not just going to be blasting anyone and everybody with like, please, somebody order from me. Like <laughs> that's not what we want to be doing. Um, and I don't want you to spend your time grasping at orders, right? Um, I want all of us to have that kind of in our pocket, but to increase our likelihood of having more contacts to pull from more potent, a larger potential pool, we need to really dig in on the providing value, really dig in on the engagement, really dig in on the consistency and showing up in ways that are really relatable um, and offer a transformational way of communication that aren't just facts about products, right? And I think we do a pretty good job of that in general, um, but I think sometimes we can, sometimes we can get a little more nitty gritty than probably the general public really needs us to, <laughs> um, but using more stories big time. So um, I saw Erica, let me open the chat and see what you're saying. Can you share for sure if there will be discounts on our current product product offerings, or if it's mostly LTO. So there's going to be, there will be an LTO. There will be a gift with purchase. And then I believe I'm, I personally am planning on offering either a discount, like for our team, either a discount or a different kind of gift with purchase situation. Um, I'm deciding personally what that is right now, because I've seen some of the November stuff and I'm not sure they're going to like slash prices, if that makes sense. I don't know that that is going to happen on a Plexus level. Um, but I think my, our customers probably look for that on Black Friday, you know? Um, that being said, they could absolutely add something last minute, right? Like they could totally be like 20% off all welcome packs or, or we don't have welcome packs. You know what I'm saying? Um, current customers there, well, there's, I haven't seen anything for like actual discounts. It's all like add on it's LTOs or it's gifts or it's, um, I need to like pull up things to say the right thing, but there are things that current customers as well as, um, new customers can take advantage of, which is great. And, um, there's one for sure LTO. There's one for sure gift with purchase. Um, and what else is there? I know that I would like to add our own team special onto that. Um, if you feel strongly about gift with purchase versus discount, let me know <laughs> what you feel like. Um, there's also going to be, you know, some offers for other earning when it comes to the brand ambassador standpoint. So some bonus things happening. Um, so that's really cool. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to add on, uh, I'm going to talk to Cassie too about like what we want to do. And if it's something we want to add on something specific for like the entire team and like your jewel upline kind of takes on something. Um, yeah, I discount might be a good idea since company is doing gift with purchase or maybe like maybe we do a different gift with purchase or something. Um, or like if people like the idea of free shipping, maybe we do free shipping. Um, so I'm kind of toying around ideas with what to do with our team. That's different than the stuff that corporate is doing, but there will be something. And I'd like to have really simplified messaging on that. So where it's not so busy that there's like six different offers happening and it's confusing, like whatever the thing is, 
Um, I'd like our team to be able to promote it really concisely and clearly. And there's like one script that's like, this is the message. Um, or maybe two, or depending on what, what it is. But um, point is, we want to make it super simple for people to come to us, trust us, um, respond to our advertising and marketing in a way that allows them to come to us already sold on the products, right? They're already sold on making a transformation. They're already sold on investing in their wellness, or they're already sold on the opportunity to earn extra money, right? Um, and that's the goal to not, to have all that teed up so that come holiday weekend, Black Friday weekend, um, we're not spending four hours messaging people. We're literally just like hopping on the phone for 10 minutes for someone to input their order. Like that is the, that's the hope, right? So um, yes, yeah, send me your uh, feelings on gift of purchase versus discount or versus free shipping or whatever your vibes are. And I'll evaluate them because I'm doing that right now uh, and trying to have scripts and graphics and all the things already made like pre Thanksgiving week so that we're ready to go and ready for it. But I like that there, it, it will build business for existing customers because sometimes in, in past years, like the only thing that has happened has been 20% off welcome backs. And it's like, okay, well, there's nothing for existing customers. Right. Um, but this year there's something for each, which is great. Um, but I'd love to add a little something extra. Uh, Corky says, if, or is that Corky who's talking? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I feel like this reaffirms what you're saying about doing this work. Yes. If you sow, you will reap. Absolutely. Like you've got to sow the seeds. You've got to sow the seeds. You got to water them for a real long time and have the faith that they will, you will be able to reap your harvest, but you can't stop watering before the seeds are ready. Right. Like you cannot stop too early is the thing. Um, Erica says, I feel like gift with purchase is super useful because then they use it and see it, remember it. Oh my gosh, my thing is won't show the other half of your message. That's so weird. Remember Plexus for a long time. Okay. Yes, I love exposure to other products. Like I actually love, I love that. Um, and part of me is the like when you discount the product packages. Uh, it's that whole thing Genevieve was saying. Like if you get them in with cheap, they have to stay with cheap. Um, free shipping feels a little more temporary, right? Like. I'm not discounting the product package. It's just like free shipping for a weekend, like feels better to me. Um, but I love additional exposure to a product. Um, I, I, I love that personally. Um, and, or if somebody comes in with something like triplex, giving them the opportunity to experience active or lean or something like that, that can be a really good supplemental item for them. Um, it's just and, yeah. a big thing though, you know, it's so big. So like, how would you do that? If you were to, would you like send them a whole pack of active? No, I mean, that's expensive. No, you'd have them added onto their order and give them a um, payment voucher for it. But even still, that's still a lot of money. Yeah, it, it is. Totally. So it would have to be like on a $150 purchase or on a $200 purchase, or you know what I mean? Um, having tiers or something. I, I've been toying around with different yeah. ideas. Like $100 okay. order ship free, $150 orders get whatever. Um, whatever makes financial sense. Um, but this might be a season where it's like, okay, a lot of my business building bonus is going to pay for this free product item because like in the hopes that there'll be a lifelong customer, right. That they'll have retention orders and it'll be credits for you guys to earn Punta Cana, right? Like there's other benefits to it. So it's like short-term sacrifice for long-term gain, but you just have to kind of weigh that out. And uh, like, if all of your BBB goes toward a free product, like, okay, we're all still getting like pay points for that person, for example. So you're still getting paid for that. You're getting Punta Cana credits. You're getting a new customer in the door who's having, a, you're going to give them fantastic customer service. And the lifetime value of that customer is like limitless, right? So it's kind of weighing out that, um, but it's, those are the thoughts I'm having right now of like, okay, what do I want to add on here that can supplement what Plexus is already doing to make sure we can make strong offers that are going to close sales. But that process is not one that's going to be like happening right on Black Friday. It's the conversations are happening tomorrow about 
you know, bringing new people in, who is interested, like what I would like to see all of us do, you know, starting this week is going back through all of our potentials. And I can send you that script that I was just sort of reading uh, about, you know, it's been a while since we've chatted or, you know, back in March, we were talking about you wanting to lose weight for summer and, you know, we never came in or whatever it is, right? Like you can bring in whatever thing is that you had been talking to them about. And it's okay to address, like it's been months since we've chatted, but this is the last thing we talked about. And I know that you haven't committed to it yet, but there's going to be all these, you know, holiday specials and things. And if you would like to know about them, could you please send me your email address or your phone number so I can make sure you get that information and not feeling like that's encroaching on anything, you know, or cause like, first of all, you're in sales. <laughs> Second of all, there are going to be a sea of social sellers doing the exact same thing. So the earlier we can do it, the better. Um, and also you've had a previous conversation with a lot of these people. So it's not completely out of the blue. Um, and you'd kind of do them a disservice not to tell them about a discount on something that they were interested in in the past. And they can absolutely be like, no, thank you. Right. So that is, it's just key to have these conversations early. And my hope is that we can tee up orders before the holiday even gets here so that we can save ourselves a lot of time. Um, but that all starts now and over delivering on the value, I think on the social media front. Um, oh my gosh, Marissa, the date for Black Friday. You're so funny. Um, I forgot about Canada. Um, but the date of Black Friday is the 24th of November. So our Thanksgiving is November 23rd. And I can't see anything about what countries the order or the deals are going to exist in yet. I don't see that. In, I don't have like the full FAQ on everything. Um, but we'll make sure that whatever we do as a team too, is something that everybody, everybody can cash in on. Right. Um, I would never like only do us or something. I always make sure it's everybody. So, um, anyway, it's kind of all I had for this evening, but I feel like we should all feel encouraged to dig into that first category of the Plex day and consider ramping up that activity big time and being uber thoughtful in our content and really getting ahead of the sea of advertising that is going to swarm social media come November. Um, and so making more contacts, developing more relationships, engaging more and reaching out more, starting more conversations. So does anybody have any other thoughts or questions or maybe just message me all your Black Friday ideas later? <laughs> We can chat more about it. But right now you've got an online event to invite to, right? We have an event happening Thursday. So that is such an easy thing to reach out to people about and ask them to be involved in. And if they end up wanting to order before the end of the month, awesome. Absolutely do that. Um, but if not, then you can guide them into getting on your text or email list, right? To contact about um, deals coming in November. I know myself, even as just a shopper of things in general, I'm already like, mm, I might go on sale for Black Friday. Like, I'm like, eh, am I going to buy it? There might be a sale in three weeks. So I know that other people must be thinking the same thing, you know? So um, thanks for hopping on tonight, you guys. Anything else? No? All right. Well, get out there and do amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. I was going to do amazing posts. I was going to say do amazing content. Engage, engage, engage. Grow your network, grow your network, grow your network, and show up consistently. And I will see you guys on our next power hour is Thursday at seven. So in two days at seven o'clock and we have our online event as well. Have a good night, everybody.